Teachings of an Initiate Chapter 1 The Days of Noah and of Christ When Nicodemus came to Christ and was told about the necessity of rebirth, he asked, How can these things be? And we also, without inquiring minds, are often anxious for more light upon the various teachings concerning our future. It helps us if we can feel that these teachings fit into physical facts as we know them. Then we seem to have firmer ground for our faith in other things which we have not yet proved. It has been the writer's work to investigate spiritual facts and correlate them with the physical in such a manner as would appeal to the reason and thus pave the way for belief. In this way it has been privileged to give light to seeking souls and many of the mysteries of life. Recently a new discovery was made with I'll read that again. Recently, a new discovery was made which, though it seemed as remote from connection with the coming of Christ as East is from West, throws considerable light on that event, especially on the manner of our meeting with the Lord, quote, in the twinkling of an eye, close quote, as the Bible has it. Our students well know how distasteful it is to the writer to relate personal experiences, but sometimes, as in the present case, it seems necessary and we shall crave indulgence for using the personal pronoun while relating to the incident. One night some time ago while in transit to a place in a far country where I had a mission to perform, I heard a cry. Though the human voice can be heard only in air, there are overtones which are heard in the spiritual realms at distances exceeding those traversed by wireless messages. The cry was close by, however, and I was on the scene in an instant, but not soon enough to give the needed help. I found a man sliding down a slanting embankment, bare of vegetation, perhaps a dozen feet in width, and as it proved on subsequent examination, almost smooth and without a fissure which would have afforded a hold for his fingers. To have saved him would have involved materialization of both arms and shoulders, but there was no time. In a moment he had slid over the overhanging precipice and was falling to the floor of the canyon below probably several thousand feet, though I am not certain, being a poor judge of distance. Prompted by a natural spirit of fellow feeling, I followed and on the way observed the phenomenon which is the basis of this article, namely that when the body has attained a considerable velocity, the ethers composing the vital body commence to ooze out, and when the body crashed into the rocks below, a mangled nest, there was very little of any ether left in it. Gradually, however, the ethers drifted together, took form, and hovered with the finer vehicles above the mangled corpse. But the man was in a stupor unable to sense or realize the fact of his altered condition. As soon as I saw that he was beyond present help, I went on. But on thinking the matter over, it dawned on me that something unusual had happened and that it was my duty to find out if the ethers left the way in every one who feel, and if so, why. Under old time conditions, this would have been difficult, but the advent of the flying machine claims many victims, especially in these unfortunate war times. It was therefore easy to ascertain the fact that when a falling body has attained a certain velocity, the higher ethers leave the dense body and the falling man becomes insensible. As the body reaches the ground, it is mangled, but the poor man may regain consciousness when the ether has reorganized itself. He will then begin to suffer from the physical consequences of the fall. If the fall continues after the higher ethers have left, the increased velocity dislodges the lower ethers and the silver cord is all that remains attached to the body. This is ruptured at the moment of impact with the ground and the seed atom passes on to the breaking point where it is held in an unusual way. Excuse me, where it is held, held in a usual way. From these facts, we came to the conclusion that it is the normal air pressure which holds the vital body within the dense. When we move with an abnormal velocity, the pressure is removed from parts, removed from some parts of the body and a partial vacuum formed, with the further result that the ethers leave the body and flow into this vacuum. The two higher ethers, which are most loosely bound, are the first to disappear and leave the man senseless after they have produced the panorama of life in a flash. Then, if the fall continues to increase the air pressure in front of the body and the vacuum behind, the more closely bound lower ethers are also forced out and the body is dead before it reaches the ground. It was found by examining a number of people in normal health 
In normal health, that each of the prismatic atoms composing the lower ethers radiate, radiated from itself the lines of force which set spinning the physical atoms in which it is inserted, enduing the whole body with life. The united trend of all these units of force is toward the per periphery of the body, where they continue, where they constitute what has been called the quote, odic fluid, close quote, also designated by other names. When the air pressure from without is lowered by residence in a high altitude, a tendency to nervousness becomes manifest because the etheric force from within rushes outward unchecked, and were the man not able to shut off the outflow of solar energy in part by an effort of will to overcome the difficulty, no one could live in such places. He had heard of shell shock, and we were aware that number, numbers of people Sorry, I'll start that again. We had heard of shell shock, and we were aware that numbers of people who had not even the slightest wound were found dead on the battlefield. In fact, we had seen and spoken with people who had passed out in this manner, but were at a loss to know why death has resulted. They all disclaimed fear and were unanimously in the assertion that they had suddenly become unconscious and a moment later they had found themselves in that they had not a single scratch on their bodies. Our preconceived idea that it must have been a momentary fear at a particularly close call which though unrealized had caused the demise prevented a full investigation but the ascertained results of the consequences of a fall of a fall led us to believe that something similar might take place in this connection and this surmise proved to be correct when a large projectile passes through the air it creates a vacuum behind it by the enormous velocity wherewith it moves and if a person is within this vacuum zone while the shell is passing, he suffers in a measure determined by his own nature and his proximity to the center of the suction. His position is in fact a reverse replica of the man who falls, for he stands still while a body, while a moving body removes the air pressure and allows the ethers to escape. If the amount of ether dislocated is comparatively slight and is composed only of the third and fourth ethers, which govern sense perception and memory, he will probably suffer only a temporary loss of memory and inability to sense things or move. This disability will disappear when the extracted ethers are again fitted inside the dense body, a much more difficult achievement than were where the physical body succumbs and the reorganization takes place without reference to that vehicle. Had the people thus hurt learned now to perform the exercises which separate the higher and lower ethers, they might have found themselves outside the body in full consciousness and perhaps ready for their first soul flight if they had had the courage to undertake it. However, that may be, it is safe to say that on their return to the dense body, they would have experienced very little, if any, inconvenience, and in case the vacuum had been strong enough to extract all four ethers and cause death, there would probably have been no unconsciousness such as overtakes the ordinary person, for it was discovered that the people who said that they felt unconscious for a moment only were wrong. It required a time varying from one to several days in the cases we investigated before the vital body was reorganized and consciousness re-established. Let us now see what bearing these newly discovered facts have on the coming of Christ and our meeting with him. While we lived in ancient Atlantis in, Atlantis, in the basins of the earth, pressure of the moisture-laden mist was very heavy. This hardened the dense body and as a further result the vibrations of the interpenetrating finer vehicles were considerably slowed down. This was especially true of the vital body, which is made of ether, a grade of matter belonging to the physical world and subject to some of the physical laws. The solar life did not penetrate the dense mist in the same abundance as is present in the clear atmosphere of today. Add to this the fact that the vital bodies of that day were almost entirely composed of the two lower ethers which further assimilation and reproduction, and we shall understand that progress was very slow. Man led mainly a vegetation I'll read that again. Man led mainly a vegetative existence, and his main exertions were devoted to the purpose of obtaining food and reproducing his kind. Had such a man be re been removed to our atmosphere conditions, the lack of exterior pressure would have resulted in an outflow of the vital body, which means death. 
Gradually, the physical body grew less dense and the amount of two higher ethers increased, so that man, man became fitted to live in a clear atmosphere under a decreased pressure such as we have enjoyed since the historical event known as the, quote, flood, unquote, when the mist condensed. Since that time, we have been able to specialize more of the solar life force. The larger proportion of the two higher ethers now found in our vital bodies enables us to express the higher human attributes appropriate to the development of this age. The vibrations of the vital body under the present atmospheric conditions have enabled the spirit to build that which we call civilization, consisting of industrial and artistic achievements and of moral and spiritual standards. The industrial and moral excellence being as closely connected and inter dependent as the artistic achievement is dependent on a spiritual connection. Industry is designed to develop the moral side of man's nature, art to unfold the spiritual. Thus we are now being prepared for the next step in our unfoldment. Let it now be remembered that the qualifications necessary for our emancipation from the conditions prevailing in Atlantis were partly psychologi psychological. We had to evolve lungs to breathe, the pure air in which we are now immersed and which allows the vital body to vibrate at a more rapid rate than did the heavy moisture of Atlantis. With this in mind, we shall readily see that future advancement lies in freeing the vital body entirely from the trammels of the dense body and letting it vibrate in pure air. This is what happened in the lofty altitude exoterically, exoterically, exoterically known as the Mount of Transfiguration. Advanced men of various ages, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus, or rather the body of Jesus ensouled by Christ, appeared in the luminous garment of the liberated soul body which we all will wear in the new Galilee, the kingdom of Christ. Open quote. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, for it would interfere with the spiritual progress of the day. So when Christ appears, we must be prepared with a soul body and thus be ready to part from our dense body to be, quote, caught up and meet him in the air, close quote. The results of the investigation which form the basis of the present article may give us an insight into the method of transition when compared with the information given in the Bible. It is said that the Lord will appear with a mighty sound like the voice of an archangel. We read of thunders and the blasts of trumpets in connection with the events. A sound is an atmospheric disturbance, and since the past passage of a projectile made by man can lift the vital bodies of soldiers out of their dense bodies it needs to ar it needs to argument to prove that the shout of a superhuman voice could accomplish similar results more efficiently quote in the twinkling of an eye close quote quote when shall these things be close quote asked the disciples they were told that at that as it was in the days of Noah, when the Aryan epoch was about to be ushered in, so should it be in the day of Christ. They ate and drank, they married and were given in marriage. But some who perhaps seemed not so different from the rest had evolved the all-important lungs so that when the atmosphere cleared, they were able to breathe pure air, while others who had only the gill clefts perished. In the day of Christ, when his voice sounds the call, there will be some who will find themselves with a properly organized soul body, able to ascend above the discarded dense bodies, while others will be like the soldiers who meet death from, quote, shell shock, unquote, on the battlefields today. May we prepare for that day by following any steps.